Hi, my name is Darren, this is QLD Off-Road Adventures, and behind me there is the Mossman Sea caravan that we have been towing over the Christmas period. Uh, we thought we'd better give you a look at it and uh, explain to you why we had it and what the purpose of towing this caravan is uh, for us. Okay, so the Mossman Sea Caravan that you see here uh, is one that uh, we picked up from Apollo. Now, uh, firstly I'd like to say that we are in absolutely no way affiliated with Apollo, nor are we affiliated with Winnebago, or are we being paid or financially reimbursed in any way uh, for anything that we say. So what we are about to tell you about this caravan is how, or what we believe it to be, and it is our opinion and uh, solely so. Uh, you can use the advice as you wish. Um, if it does help you, uh, we're very grateful for that. And uh, if you'd like to uh, let us know uh, what we've done well, what we haven't done well, or if you liked it or not, uh, that'd be greatly appreciated. Okay, so starting on the outside, uh, that is a rather large tunnel boot uh, that actually travels through the entire uh, van length. So that goes underneath the uh, front bed or the main bed which is located at the front of the van um, and uh, it does provide uh, ample storage for uh, chairs and uh, like a, a table. Um, it also houses uh, your uh, winders for your legs, uh, your awning hook and uh, jack and things like that you need uh, for this van. Um, next to that, uh, the entrance door, uh, it's one of these new um, uh, sort of um, multi-stage doors. We'll, we'll uh, show you a bit more about that uh, when we get there, uh, but it's actually um, designed to separate, so uh, you've got a security screen rather than just an insect screen behind it. All the windows that you see are double glazed, um, tinted, and uh, they do have fly mesh and uh, block out roller included underneath there there we have another storage uh, solution um, which is very sizable it's about the size of a bunk bed now um, the, the reason that storage exists is if you have a twin bunk setup if you go for triple bunk setup uh, I believe you lose that storage I'll stand corrected if that is wrong but uh, I think you'll find that uh, they will require that space so it is a sizable storage amount and you've got as per usual your uh, TV connection, uh, external power point. Um, a nice uh, little feature as well is uh, you've got the two speakers out there which are connected to an internal sound system that I'll show you in a minute. Um, that's quite good. Now traveling around the back. So around the back uh, one spare tire, an integrated uh, bumper if you want a second tyre fitted, um, it could be done, um, however, um, it's something you would have to uh, talk to uh, the manufacturer as to if it is uh, feasible and also whether it, the, the bar is actually strong enough to support that. But as you can see, it is bolted on, so it can be moved and you could possibly put a second one to it. Um, I know that when you travel a little bit more remote, although this is on-road van only and you would never take it on dirt road, but on a, even on a bitumen surface it may require uh, an additional spare just to shear to the remoteness. Now next to that um, is also an outdoor shower. Um, they come in very handy, especially if, you've, if you're travelling with a family um, and you have a bit of sand on your feet or anything like that from the beach and you just want to give yourself a quick wash off. So. That can, uh, that can be quite uh, beneficial as well. Okay, so on the opposite side of the van, uh, on the far left there, you've got your uh, toilet shower cubicle. Um, that uh, little hatch underneath is obviously your, your toilet cassette. Those that not owned a van before know not, not much about them. Uh, directly next to that is your fridge, so you've got the upper and lower vents, um, and in the middle there is your power inlet. Um, and below it you've got a filler point for water tank um, or tanks. This van does have multiple tank options and uh, also you've got main pressure inlet. Then you've got your Truma exhaust. Um, 
which is uh, for your hot water system, which is located under the dinette in the uh, in the in, uh, dinette seating there inside the van. I should also point out that that vent up there is for when your gas is activated in your fridge freezer. Um, now, and uh, on the other side here, um, we already spoke earlier about the uh, tunnel boot, and that's the opposite side. Now, having a very quick look at this drawbar, um, that drawbar is uh, quite uh, solid. It's been very well engineered. Um, the actual van itself um, seems to be very solid, of solid build. Um, it's certainly been uh, structurally built quite well and uh, it will be very suitable for uh, what you wish to use it for. Okay, just uh, under here, um, what you're actually looking at is, um, apart from all the water pipes and water tanks, that is uh, the Alco, um, it's a rubber core, or rubber internal core suspension. Um, I'll get into more in detail uh, about that in a minute, but uh, yeah, it's, um, that's the suspension, the on-road van, and on-road only van um, comes Okay, um, so let's go and have a look inside this van. Um, so I'm just going to open this door. But I'm also, uh, I might actually just quickly uh, speak to you about this door. So, okay, these little latches that you see up here, they're actually designed to ensure that somebody hasn't closed the glass component correctly. Um, it stops it from flying open. But when you do open the door, there's a little latch here that when you pull it towards you, the door separates. Now that's actually quite a great feature. Um, I'd be very cautious of that glass. I uh, believe that that glass is, although it's toughened, uh, wouldn't be cheap to replace if it gets damaged. But as far as the actual security door is concerned, uh, it is a solid security mesh. So it does afford some protection uh, for uh, anybody inside the van. And uh, it does uh, also allow some ventilation. So let's go and have a look inside the van. There we go. All right, so going inside the van. Okay, so now we're inside the van. Um, what you first walk in on, so just to give a bit of an idea, that's the door there. So once you walk through the door, the very first thing you walk into is the kitchen. Um, it comes fully equipped with a uh, filter and a normal tap, uh, hot and cold, uh, both mains and tank pressure. Um, and then you've got a burner, which is a Thetford. Um, one electric to gas. I'm not sure what other options are available. That's something you'd have to ask if you are interested. And then above here, you've got an exhaust fan. Um, on the uh, next part here, you've got a quite a sizable pantry. Um, look, kitchen space, in actual fact, is so much in abundance that I would actually recommend um, downsizing slightly from the manufacturer's point of view, but I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, so here's your bunks, so you've got the upper bunk and your lower bunk um, and I believe there's a triple bunk option which obviously would considerably reduce the space between the two. Each one of these windows it's worth noting that you have an insect screen component as well as a blockout component. The blockout component is a foil component on the outside, so it's silver, um, that should help somewhat with the heat. Also worth noting is that the bunks on both of them, the upper and lower, do come with this netting um, that is affixed above the window um, and that's to ensure that uh, little children can't fall out those windows because those windows do open a long way out, um, making it quite a sizable hole, which is great for ventilation, not so good for little kids. Um, next to the bunks, we do have another sizable storage cupboard, which obviously is something that uh, is ideal for kids. And it's nice to see too, they've got a bit of hanging space. Um, something that is a little lacking in the cabinet or cupboards located for the parents. So directly in there is your bathroom. Uh, I'll try and stay out the mirror, it's gonna be a bit difficult, but uh, in within that, so you've got a cabinet here um, in that um, bathroom and in that cabinet itself, uh, you've got storage. You've also got uh, storage uh, next to that um, and below, so again, ample storage in the bathroom. We've also got a proper porcelain hot cold mixer uh, sink and you have a washing machine. Now these washing machines, they are okay 
I, sp I suppose, if you travel. But uh, to give you an idea, they are very, very small. You will do very minimal load. But given that uh, you know you, you are also restricted on water use, that's um, probably not necessarily a bad thing. Um, toilet, a full-size toilet, um, chemical toilet, and. Uh, the advantage with these Thetford toilets too is that they're actually allowed to rotate. So, um, you know, you can move them around a little bit to give you slightly more space. Then uh, we have a, a shower. Now, I must apologize for that uh, uh, torn apart uh, shower rose hose. Uh, unfortunately, that's how it was given to us. But uh, obviously somebody was a bit harsh on that one. Um, but yeah, it is a full size shower. I am six foot four and I do comfortably fit in there. Um, and it's got sliding glass doors which are locked on so that it can't slam shut. As far as the privacy to the actual bathroom is concerned, it is a magnetic operated Constantina door only. So there it is. Um, now, it is sufficient for what it is, um, but uh, in my opinion, in a van with an entire family, it may be a little bit lacking in privacy. Uh, moving back into the kitchen, uh, microwave, uh, quite a good size. Um, above that is all your main switchings. So you've actually got a, a fully uh, programmable um, system um, and that system will deal with your solar inputs, it'll deal with lighting, it'll deal with your pumps um, and everything else in the van, aircon inputs, the lot. Uh, next to that is your Truma hot water controller um, and a AC isolator. Um, also, the uh, good place to hide the uh, remote controls. Uh, moving along, that's your dinette. Now, your dinette has a table that does fold down, and these two cushions there are designed to go over the top of that uh, table to provide the additional bed. Master bedroom. Right, what can I say about a master bed? Uh, in its current form, it is folded. Um, it's a f allowing there for a reasonable amount of space. I'm a very big unit and uh, I do very comfortably have the ability to walk around it and get to the cupboards. Now, as far as the actual cupboards are concerned, um, we do have a little bit of hanging space up there, as early mentioned. However, we have no shelving and that is a big shortcoming. You do, most people who travel will take one maybe two shirts that require hanging the majority of uh, items especially in a family van that you'll be carrying requires shelving so it is probably something that again if you were to purchase one of these vans something you'd have to speak to the manufacturer and see whether they could possibly fit additional shelving at least in one of these cupboards you also have the overhead cupboards uh, which afford a bit more storage which uh, does help and then you've got the bed, uh, the same cupboard on this side of the bed. Um, now, the bed itself, I will demonstrate how that works. So, and, and this is actually one of the shortcomings. For van this length, um, and I will go into the details in a minute, once you fold that down and then push it back, now that's hard up, you now have no space not through the door and not to get down that side in my opinion and again this is my opinion only this bed can be in the right location providing the front door isn't or the the front door needs to be relocated um, or the bed needs to be relocated so once again sorry the bed is in the right location providing the front door can be relocated alternatively the bed has to be relocated Personally, and this is again only my opinion, I believe that what should happen is the bed is in a good location, but what should happen is given the enormity of that kitchen, I would suggest to have the entry door there where the pantry is, put the pantry here, bring it in a slightly closer, and you will actually end up with a bit, little bit of better layout, and you won't step into the bedroom literally, or into the bed literally. Now, the other thing worth remembering is that um, there's a size amount of storage under that bed and again you can see that the storage cabinet under there is quite short the reason for that again now of course is that once I fold this mattress back up so 
I'll pull this cushion top back up. I'll push the mattress in and then you will see that now it's actually rather close to the corners. So you are a little bit limited on the storage size. Above that you've got a television, that television does rotate into the dinette um, and it uh, also allows the children to um, see what's going on on TV. And then here you've got a sound system, a fusion sound system, which is internal and external speaker use. Now, just want to get into a couple of other little things. Um, okay, so what I'll do is we'll, the inside we're pretty well done with. There's not too many things that are actually wrong. The, um, the air conditioning and heating unit in here is very, very good. Uh, it does its job um, and the van even today it's a 30 degree day when you touch the ceiling it is warm but it's not hot so it's very well insulated okay so I've gone through most of the things that I believe in the van are of relevance to most families that would uh, buy or consider buying one of these vans now one of the things that I do want to just quickly touch on um, with families, anything um, in regards to a van is, is all about practicality. And this van does have some of those key points that it needs to be adaptable. If you haven't got the ability to adapt the van uh, for use, um, then they, there are some issues with in regards to um, you know whether or not families will actually enjoy using this. Um, there needs to be uh, separation for parents and there needs to be separation for children and that separation can unfortunately only occur if um, the, the, the right measures are in place so one of these um, right measures for example would be to have the ability to screen off that parent quadrant if you have younger children and the parents wish to um, just lay there and watch a bit of TV at night or whatever without having that privacy screen or something that separates uh, the light and noise come from that side across to that side where the children are uh, you'll find that very difficult so whether a privacy screen should be considered to be put into here um, will cause issues with the aircon but uh, or whether there needs to be one put on a parent side again could cause some issues with the air conditioning that's something uh, for the manufacturers to look at so one of the other issues is this ladder in order to make that ladder safe and compliant and in order to ensure that uh, obviously children can climb up there safely it has to be secured in a bed base that's fantastic um, but while the ladder is out which would have to happen at night especially if a child is up there because they might require to um, go to the toilet or something else um, that does restrict access to the bathroom that becomes a bit of a problem for um, obviously a parent or somebody else in the van that needs to get to that bathroom. There, there aren't many options, I understand that, but uh, one of the options possibly worth considering is seeing whether an anchor point could be put into that door somehow um, and maybe that will move to here in order to ensure that there's some way to get up there. It isn't a good solution, but uh, certainly a possibility. Um, but again, um, if interested in this van, that's something you might have to discuss whether it's possible. Right, now, uh, so we've gone through all the good things and the bad things um, in general. Now I want to get into a little bit more uh, technical stuff. Okay, I've taken you through a number of positive um, and negative features. So one of the things I would like to do at this point is just go through some of the technical stuff. On this uh, 10 day trip that we had this van for, everything we did is a highly traveled, regularly traveled bitumen road. So no dirt roads or off-road or particularly rough roads. Now, having said that, um, parts of the Pacific Highway, in particular south of Ballina, heading down towards Kosava, there's a lot of construction work at the moment, so the, the, the bitumen surface in, in those locations is um, quite rough. And we did discover there were some issues in regards to that. So 
The first issue we found is that the freezer in particular opened a couple of times. Now, we, we're not sure, and I will be mentioning that to the manufacturer, we're not sure whether that is a fault with the freezer um, in, in its design or whether there's just a fault with the freezer. The, the fact that that door opened um, <laughs> and we ended up with two ice trays on the floor, it, it's, not, it's not a big issue. Um, it's easily remedied, um, but it showed a lot of movement inside the van. And following that, I did fit a camera inside the van um, to show just what happens on a regular road. So this wasn't the rough stuff, uh, or the, the, the rough bitumen surface between Coffs Harbour and Balna. It was uh, a rather much smoother road surface uh, going into our Luca uh, from the highway. And uh, you can actually see um, just how much movement there is. So this is the part for him. Okay, now we've seen that, um, that might explain why that freezer opened. So again, I'm not sure whether it is a manufacturing fault with that freezer or the, 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 the door locking mechanism, it's just a little push button, which lifts a little hook up and releases it, um, or whether there's something that needs to happen there uh, more, or a much more serious issue. So the more serious issue, um, and I, I think this is probably the likely reason for it, and I'm not in any way suggesting that um, the product that I'm about to speak about is inadequate. I'm just saying that the way it's used in this particular van um, may be an issue. It, it is, uh, this van is fitted with Alco independent rubber suspension. And I did touch on that very briefly uh, earlier when I showed you what it looks like under the van. Now that rubber, independent rubber suspension, um, provides the smoothness or the roughness of the ride inside a vehicle and in this case in this caravan the van itself needs to be understood uh, the tear of the van is, is quite light so the tear weight of this van is 2060 so that's 2060 kilos um, making the suspension possibly at three ton which is the rating for that suspension may possibly make it just a little bit too harsh. I, I don't know, but it certainly showed that the inside of the van was being shaken quite a lot um, on those roads uh, using that suspension. The interesting thing is that the ATM of this van is 2950, so 2950 kilos, which leaves you with a ball weight, uh, sorry, which leaves you with a payload of around about 890 kilos. That is considerable. That is by far one of the biggest payloads out of any caravan I had ever come across. And possibly a very, very good thing because it does allow particular families to take those extra bits along with them, the fishing rods, the boogie boards, the extra clothes, the game machines, etc., etc., for them to uh, have on their holiday trip um, and, and, you know, keep the children entertained. Um, the le overall length of the van um, being 8400, so 8.4 meters, um, still gives it quite a remarkable amount of move movability. We've, uh, some of the roads we've been on, uh, including traveling up the waterfall way to, to Dorigo, um, if anybody has ever traveled up there, they'll know it is a very narrow, very winding and extremely steep bit of road. Um, and the van did it quite well. Um, it's handling at speed, it's handling through corners, it's turning and everything is fantastic. Um, I have to honestly give the manufacturer a lot of credit for that. Um, I think the aerodynamics and, and the, the design of the van exterior uh, had a lot to do with that, especially at high speed. Um, it seems to be very, very settled uh, behind, the car, uh, behind the tow vehicle or the car and uh, without too many issues. Uh, the over width of 2490, you are getting uh, very, very close to lane limits. Your, your average lane limit or your standard lane limit should be three meters. 
and at 2490 that does not leave a lot of maneuverability but sufficient maneuverability to actually be able to move. Some vans out there are pushing further out to that, uh, up to 2.8 which then very much restricts the ability to manoeuvre the van out of harm's way should you need to. Overall height, uh, it's not too bad, it's uh, just a touch over 3 metres, uh, 3 metres and 35 centimetres um, and that will be due to the uh, size of the air conditioning unit on the roof. Um, so no issue there. The suspension, as I mentioned, I do believe um, it may need to be looked at. Um, I, I have a suspicion that um, it could be improved upon, it could be something much better. Uh, the body internals and externals are gel coated uh, panels, um, similar or almost identical to what a lot of band manufacturers use these days. Um, it's very well insulated, as I said, it's a 30 plus day today and it's not too bad. We do not have aircon on at the moment, and yes, it's warm, but it's certainly not boiling hot. Uh, the external uh, coating or the external guard that you saw on the lower part, which is a decal. It's a sort of like titanium looking uh, you know, uh, decal along the lower edge of the van. It's, it provides the look uh, a little bit. Um, it doesn't really afford too much protection. Uh, potential, potentially it protect the gel coat slightly. Uh, that's about it. Um, I, as far as the external actual appearance of the van, again, keeping the price point in mind, it is a little, perhaps a little boring. Um, it potentially put a little bit more interest into the van, uh, colour choices, some external features, things like that, but uh, it's pretty bland, but uh, it is good. And the interior as well, uh, we the one of the comments we received a lot is it's very bland, but I don't actually mind that. Um, I think for family you want simples, simple and basic designs uh, to work with. Um, now, uh, so that's it. Uh, the ball weight um, is something I also want to touch on. The ball weight in this van is, is quite good. Um, the average van or the average trailer that you tow, you can usually calculate around 10% of the overall weight of the, the, the vehicle to be sitting on your ball. Now, given this is a twin, a twin or tandem axle uh, caravan, that obviously reduces a little bit. So the ball weight on this is uh, 145 kilos. In my 79 series Land Cruiser, I did not need um, anything other than um, my standard tow ball to put it on, and it sat very nicely behind it. Um, the tongue had to, we had to get a tongue that was slightly lower, um, obviously, um, than the standard Toyota tongue, which comes on a much more shallow angle. Um, it would have lifted the nose a little too high, but it sits very well behind it. Um, uh, and uh, it, it towed remarkably well. Now, uh, the issues uh, my partner found, she found um, a number of issues with this van that needs looking at, um, in her opinion. So one of, one of the things was that, that there's limited hooks, um, as I was saying before, for hanging anything up. She would like to see a couple more external hooks uh, to, to be put to the van. There are two on the wall uh, next to the ensuite or next to the bathroom, but there's no other hooks in the van, so there's nothing for you to hang up. Having said that, it wouldn't be hard to get some 3M hooks and put them up yourself. However, what she's getting at is this, that there's actually nowhere to really hang the towels up. There's nowhere really to sort of hang up other little things, bits and pieces that uh, probably need hanging up. Um, as far as the rest of it is concerned, um, look, value for money, um, it's up there with the best of them, honestly it is, and I think uh, a bit of a bland exterior, a bit of a bland interior, um, a couple of very minor issues are not what the problem is going to be. If you pack it smart, the suspension um, will not cause or provide too much of an issue. Um, so long as the van is packed smartly, um, but uh, it's something I think the manufacturer should, certainly should have a look at. Um, you've got a quite large awning outside that will provide ample shade, and uh, as it is a standard rollout awning, you can also get an external um, uh, sort of annex that, uh, kit that you can buy uh, to put on it. Um, so yeah, uh, from me, look, um, 
I've owned a few caravans myself and I've been in a few others. I've, I've got a reasonable amount of experience with caravans. I wouldn't say I'm exceptional. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there with differing or better uh, knowledge and differing opinions. But uh, I think overall value for money as a family man, you, you would buy something that's quite good. Um, and all of the little things, apart from the suspension, uh, like the door location, things like that, they're, they're things that can, you can have a look, given the price point, and given uh, the fact that uh, what you're getting is actually not a bad thing. So thank you very much for watching. If you have liked what you've seen, um, if you uh, enjoy and would like to see more reviews of this nature, we have done a, another review with a lifestyle camper trailer, which you can find on our YouTube page. Um, and but uh, yeah, if you do like uh, any to, for us to do any more reviews or show you any more reviews, or in particular, maybe you would like to see a specific review, then uh, let us know, and we'll see what we can do. Thank you for watching.